Welcome everyone. Um, we're really excited that you're here. I'm really excited for this, this event um, and for Andrew to be um, joining us. So we are talking about employer benefits tonight and that is Andrew's area of expertise um, and not mine. So I'm just gonna do a, a brief intro and then let him get into it. But just a quick note on accessibility. There should be closed captions available as well as a full transcript. You should see um, the button on your bar at the bottom of your screen and be able to pull that up. Let me know in the chat if you have any issues with that and I'll be happy to, to address those. And we're also happy to send out slides and like we said, the recording, which will be captioned, a uh, transcript, anything that you need after the event. If you have any issues right now, in the chat is fine, or you can email us at that email, but um, in the chat should be should be perfect for right now. Um, feel free to use the chat. Like I said, throughout, we'll be responding with our, you know, with to any questions and also be kind of gathering up questions for, for Andrew to answer uh, at the end of his presentation. So you can put them in the chat or in the Q&A. Um, just a heads up that you can chat to everyone. So when you are directing chats, you can either chat just to the host and panelists, which would be myself and Andrew, or to everyone in the audience. So just be mindful of that if you have, if you, depending on who you want to chat with. So a lot of you may already know who, who we are, but um, I'm Bridget McElroy. I'm from Neurodiversity in the Workplace. And just a brief intro to us. So we work with companies to help them develop more inclusive hiring practices, specifically for neurodivergent job seekers and employees, um, specifically focused on kind of cutting through the bias that exists with that traditional interview process that really relies on those social nuances and can be a big barrier for a lot of folks. So we're working with a bunch of companies, including SAP, Bank of America, Dell Technologies, VMware and many others. And so I'll also put in, in the chat if anyone is interested in connecting with us further or learning more about our programs, um, I'll put in some contact info and ways to kind of connect with us. But we wanted to have this uh, collaboration with Andrew and Planet Across the Spectrum because um, that is not our area of expertise. And so we think it's so important to you know, once you get that job or even before you get that job to really be able to understand the benefits that come along with that. And they can be very complicated and require a lot of knowledge. And I know I'm not great at that. So I will definitely learn something tonight. So we're really excited to have Andrew here. And so Andrew, I'll let you um, get started. Perfect. And I love to be interrupted along the way. So put it in the chat and Bridget can interrupt me. Um, this will be the least boring presentation on employer <laughs> benefits that you will probably ever attend, ever, unless you attend another one of mine, in which case that, you know, maybe I'll improve upon it. Um, so I'm going to go through, I'm going to spend a little bit of time, what I, I realize that there's so much I go over with an individual basis, so many recommendations that I recommend. A lot of this applies very specifically to certain companies. Many of the companies that um, Neurodiversity in the Workplace works with, the very larger ones, lots of these apply. Not every company has all of these benefits, but that's why they're all a little bit different, and that's why it's important to see what's available. So, okay, perfect. Keep going. So, So, and again, we work a lot with companies that want to hire individuals. We work with uh, families and we work with the individuals themselves. I like to think if it has to do with money, there's a chance I can help or know somebody who can. So this is just, again, uh, I don't know, propaganda. We can move on fast that one. 
so again, our goal is, so we like to work with companies so they can offer, and again, employee benefits that, that really matter. And on the next slide that we'll get to, and if you can't tell, I really don't read my PowerPoints, but that, that doesn't matter because there isn't a lot of text anyway. Trust me, it's very enjoyable once we get to the fun stuff. Um, but what we do is, you know, we like to offer just, again, a tailored approach to all companies, whether they need help with the 401k or, or just like a one-on-one -on -one for if, you know, VMware hires somebody and they're interested in helping somebody plan financially so they don't spend all the money. But a lot of what we do with individuals is going over their employer benefits, which it's on the next slide. I think it says that it makes up 30% of total compensation. And just like uh, this meme here, and there will be more of these to come throughout the presentation, most people understand nothing about the employer benefits. There's something called a summary plan description. It is hundreds of pages. There is one for each employer benefit. They were not made for mere mortals to be able to understand. But these can be explained simply. And a lot of the recommendation are so similar. And I mean, there is it, there's some good tips that if you have this benefit, you should be able to take it away and learn something. And hopefully by the end, you will not say you understand nothing. You'll say, I understand almost, almost nothing. No, I'm just kidding. Hopefully we leave you with a little bit more than that. Um, if you're curious whether I'm joking or not during this presentation, I almost certainly am. And again, um, our firm is primarily uh, majority neurodiverse. I'm autistic, over half our staff is. So again, but I'm still very sarcastic. So let's keep going. <laughs> okay. So, and again, there, there's, you know, every employee is different. That's why there, it's important to offer choice, but curated choice. So that employers don't offer, you know, 50 different health care plans, right? They try to make what's good for somebody who's neurodiverse good for everyone. But really what they're doing is just, you know, a lot of times things are, are put together at a certain place, certain time. Um, some of the benefits are very good, and this, but some are maybe not as useful to some of the population. Some are maybe even more useful. And, you know, really should consider factors beyond, you know, the financial and look at holistic wellness. And again, being financially happy is very important and understanding what you have and, and why you have it. So this is just a little bit more about what we do with working with employers now. Uh, I think we have a lot of individuals on this call, but we work with them to help design their, their health insurance, their 401k, all of the things that we'll talk about are things that we work with employers for. Um, and the reason I, we like to do that is because we found that's the way to help the most individuals, right? If we can help an employer with 100 employees, then we can help a, you know, and that employer has 75% neurodivergence we can help 75 neurodivergent individuals with their benefits. But it's also really important. I'm sure if Dell called me and said, we would like you to do our entire benefit package, I would try to figure it out. But for the most part, a lot of the larger companies, you know, rely on um, people finding their own advice and kind of there's even more benefits, but that can create even more confusion. We try to streamline, make things simple, save time and resources. So there's a lot of the, I'll call it the usual neurodiverse hiring proposition. Uh, this is just a really quick overview. I know neurodiversity in the workplace does a lot more than these, but what I we don't see is, again, benefits that matter. So that's that fourth part. There's flexible hours, work options, accommodations, hiring practices, but there's also just, again, more than compensation and even compensation itself.
Okay. So one of the really interesting things about benefits when it comes to the workplace is they have to treat everyone the same. Uh, the law, there's no, again, you can't offer for initially very good reasons. You can't offer somebody who's neurodivergent different benefits than somebody who isn't. So we, you have to really create a true universal design approach. There can be maybe some different hiring processes or some different accommodations. But as a general rule, you can't offer somebody who's neurodivergent a separate benefit package because, well, what if it wasn't better? What if it wasn't as good? So everybody is being offered something that's the same. Sometimes that works out. Sometimes it doesn't. So this is, um, again, just a little bit what we're going to go over more today. We could skip this one. <laughs> I want to get to the fun stuff. Okay. One of the top benefits that people care about is medical insurance. And again, the reason we held this in October is it's the start of most people's annual enrollment where you get the emails. Maybe there's a really boring webinar definitely more boring than the one you're attending today on your benefit options. And you get these things called summary plan descriptions. Um, and we're going to go over probably a dozen plus different benefit options. Even I'll probably cover them in a half hour and then any questions. Uh, health insurance is really important. And the thing that I really want to, there's a few parts that want to stress. And that is that taking your employer's health insurance is not always the best option. So let me give you, you know, a couple of examples. A lot of employers have high deductible plans and they offer a match with a HSA. Well, if an individual is on Medicare or Medicaid, they're ineligible for an HSA because they don't have a high deductible plan, even if you also pay for one. If any parents are on this, uh, please keep in mind, just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do something. My wife likes to tell me that a lot. And so, for example, you're allowed to keep a child or young adult on your insurance until they're 26. That may not be the best option. It's important to look at coverages, price, and again, these group health care plans are sometimes not the best. Sometimes a smaller company that's more regional can be a better option. Sometimes getting a policy on the exchange a, you know, can save a lot of money. Um, some employers are offering subsidies to be able to do that and to get individual insurance. Um, so just keep in mind that just because an employer offers you a group plan doesn't mean that you should take it. You should evaluate all the options that exist. And sometimes an employer will offer cash if you don't take their health insurance. So why get less, why get worse health insurance for less money? That doesn't make a lot of sense. So that is something that we uh, can help, again, companies, individuals go over, structure the best way to do things. An explanation of benefits is actually not what I'm doing right now. An explanation of benefits is uh, it's also called an EOB for explanation of benefits. And that says what a policy covers, what it doesn't cover. And to also keep in mind that a high deductible plan doesn't mean you have a high deductible. So I find a lot of people will overpay for a plan that does too much. I have a health insurance plan with a $6,000 deductible, except deductible almost never applies to anything. It doesn't apply to speech therapy, therapy, doctor's visits, MRIs, uh, vaccines, or blood work. or So what does it apply to? Not too much. So it's important to take a look and get past maybe the deductible part and look at what a plan actually covers. And a lot of routine things are covered. 
So dental insurance, I'm going to make this one pretty simple. You probably don't want to get your employer's dental insurance, okay? Um, And that's not just because dentist invented the electric chair. There's a reason it's a chair. A dentist came up with the idea. So if you're not a fan of the dentist, you have another reason. And so many dentists are offering uh, subscriptions like Netflix. So you can pay $500 a year. You'll get x-rays, you'll get cleanings, you'll get some routine maintenance, and then you'll get, let's say, major off a major cosmetic surgery. And you say, well, what if I need major coverage? Well, if you look at most dental plans, and this isn't all of them, but it's the vast majority, they only cover one to $2,000 a year for major services. So if the dental insurance is a hundred bucks a month, And you can get a plan from your dentist that is 50 bucks a month, even if you need major surgery every so often, which is probably not likely, you're almost certainly still ahead. Very rarely am I seeing dental insurance that makes sense. Again, if an exception would be is if you had trouble maybe budgeting, right, Um, and you needed to have that great. Also, if you like your dentist, dentists get paid crap when it comes to dental insurance. They much prefer you to do the subscriptions and or, again, discounts for paying cash. So seriously inquire with your dentist. And if you don't have a dentist, you should probably have one and, you know, see if there is a a discount program available. Again, usually maybe like $500 a year to get all your cleanings and things like that. And it's really a win-win for everyone. That is, yes. Okay. So <laughs> that is Thor, by the way, from, okay, from the Avengers. And vision insurance. There's a theme here. Probably doesn't make much sense. Uh, I had, there are, you could get an eye exam almost anywhere. Uh, even a lot of eye doctors are independent. So even some of the ones at Walmart, uh, they they just rent the space there or Target or Costco. And you can get glasses online pretty easily, pretty cheaply, usually more customizable. Um, and a lot of times when it comes to glasses, so we I I've had very good dental or sorry vision insurance. My, I had good dental insurance too, just because my father's a dentist, but not everyone can get that. Um, but when it came to vision insurance, you know, a lot of times it's it's also, well, what if you don't use it? If you had vision insurance in 2020, what's the chance you went to the eye doctor in 2020? And it's a use it or lose it. The cost of, you know, I just went and got an eye exam. It was $90 for everything, ordered some glasses online. It is way cheaper than if I had vision insurance that covered 100% of it. It also just allows you more choice. You can get sales, you can get uh, maybe some different coatings or some nicer glasses. It allows you, because a lot of the online retailers, they don't always really take insurance. So it can be a lot cheaper to have quality glasses, not through insurance. Okay, a cafeteria plan. So a lot of, some companies offer cafeteria plans. If you don't know what this is, well, there's a chance you have one anyway, but it's an employer will offer you choice in your benefit package. They will offer you different options. So for example, you're getting, think of it like going to a cafeteria. Very original name, by the way. It's also called a section 125, but you would never call it that. And what? so what you're allowed to do is you're allowed to pick what you would like. These are very good, except the issue is that there's a paralysis by analysis. There's almost too much choice, right? So I, we find that a lot of companies don't offer them maybe as much as they should. But if your company does, it can be a great option to 
You know, for example, they might say, if you don't need health insurance, you can have more go towards the 401k or you can purchase this type of insurance. So you're really getting a pool of dollars with your employee benefits and you're getting to pick what you want to buy with them. And it's very, if you do have a cafeteria plan, you know, don't buy benefits that you're not using. Don't buy a bunch of food that you're not using. Put it in the retirement, put it somewhere. So that is something that's important to look at. Okay. Nonprofit retirement plans. We're going to name a bunch of things from the IRC. That's the Internal Revenue Code. Um, and it, 403B, 457, nonprofits can use these plans. They don't have to. Major nonprofits can also use 401k plans. If you want to know the difference, there isn't that much anymore. Uh, there can be some differences. Uh, the most important thing is, is the employer matching your contributions. So if the employer's matching, you want to take full advantage of that. That is free money. So what that means is if... So at my company, if somebody puts in 4% of their paycheck, I am going to then give them 4% of their paycheck. That is across the board with 403B, 457. There's 401A as well. Okay. So there are also 401K and profit sharing plans. There's also what's called simples and SEPs and solo 401ks and other things that I could probably make up and I you could guess whether it actually is a plan like a 412e or which actually is uh, a lot of companies will also put money in uh if they're profitable so a profit sharing plan is only for profit companies a non profit can't make profit by definition um but they can share in if the company has a good year, they can put money in. Most places don't offer traditional pension plans anymore, but some of the major companies will offer putting money in something that looks like a 401k, but it earns a safe rate of return. And that's usually in conjunction with a 401k. The most important thing here is that Although the money is usually designated for retirement, with many company-sponsored retirement plans, you're able to take a loan out if you need it. So, for example, you can, generally speaking, get up to 50% of the value, pay it back over five years, you pay yourself back, you can use that for expenses or you know emergencies without paying taxes, penalties, or fees. And the reason that that's offered is to encourage people to be able to save for retirement, not withdraw at all before retirement, and you know, but still have some flexibility. You know, what if something does come up? Okay, life insurance. Uh, yes, neurodiverse can get life insurance. Uh, Maybe concerned about not being eligible. However, group insurance can be an extremely cost-effective tool. This is very important. If you have a lot of coexisting health conditions, um, neurodivergence is not usually one in its own of really any sort. It's things that can be co-occurring or, or medications. When you first start a company and you do your first enrollment, Generally, you can get more coverage without a medical exam or medical questions with group insurance. Now, you can decrease it later, but what they don't want to do is you get sick and then you want more insurance. That only works with health insurance, life insurance companies. That doesn't work. Uh, you can't just buy a ton of life insurance when that person is standing next to you. Um, so... It's very, again, if you, the other thing too is if you are in very good health, there's a chance that getting life insurance, not through your employer, can actually be more cost effective. And the added benefit is you can get more for less money 
And if you leave your employer, you get to take it with you. Life insurance is really, really cheap for a 30 year old, you know, a million dollars, same price, you know, 15 years is probably 20 bucks a month. So it's really not expensive. And it's something that I'd consider very important to have. If your employer offers it, again, um, it, especially if you're going for higher dollar amounts and you're not just taking the free insurance that an employer is offering, um, then I would you know, look at having life insurance outside, especially if you, you know, have a family, a higher income, you know, debt, et cetera. So if I had to pick my probably number one most important thing that I tell everyone to do that is so close to universal, it is if you work for a large employer, they usually offer a buy-up for what for long-term disability insurance. Now, that is not government disability benefits. That is not AFLAC the duck that you see. Generally speaking, an employer by default for free will offer a very limited amount of what's called again long-term disability. So what that means is if you can't do your job and some definition they're in for after 90 days, give or take, that it will pay. Now, uh, the free disability is usually nowhere near enough to cover if you couldn't work to make your payments on and replace your income. A way to think about workplace disability insurance is it's really paycheck insurance. You're really insuring the paycheck that you're earning from the job that is different than other disability benefits. And the qualifications are also very different depending on the employer. You know, it could be that you can't do the specific job that you're doing at said employer, but you may be able to do a, another job. Many times workplace disability does have a pre-existing condition clause, but that clause is usually limited for let's say a year or two. So they don't want people just to work and then stop working to collect the benefits. So that's something where maybe you're not sure that you can go back to work um, and it could be a good idea and you still may qualify for disability benefits down the road, even if it is something that's pre-existing. In order to increase your disability benefits from your employer, I'm not joking. Uh, uh, it can be pennies a month. It can be pennies a month, $10 a year. I had, um, I, I remember this one very specifically. Uh, I had a client who had disability insurance for free for $1,000 a month. He made $250,000 a year. So $1,000 a month was not going to pay for anything, let alone in Brooklyn, uh, and replace his income. For $50 a month, he was able to get, I think it was 15000 a month, and that would be tax-free. So he would, you know, do really well. And again, that's a very large increase um, and a very big difference. And to give you some perspective, something like that outside of an employer, not $50 a month, would cost 500 probably even more a month. So it's one of the most important things you can do through an employer and increase during the annual enrollment process is the long-term disability buy-up. It is really cheap, very important if there's one takeaway. See, there's no memes on this graphic. That's how important it is. Okay. Uh, so there's also transportation benefits and commuter benefits. Uh, recent tax law took the ability away for like bicycling. But if you uh, do commute and you are in a city and you may, the advantage is more tax benefits. So even if the employer doesn't give you money, if you can have that payroll deducted to fund like a transit card or something like that, it's uh, 270 a month. And it's something that is a good idea to do. Uh, mostly, I just thought the puppy was really cute. So, but. So, 
Employee discount plans. Okay. So many employers offer benefits that people are just not aware of. So almost every large employer will offer you a nice discount on your cell phone bill. Does anyone not like discounts on their cell phone bill? I don't think so. Uh, many large employers offer, for example, car rental discounts, even for personal use, uh, car and home insurance discounts, pet insurance, miscellaneous discounts. Maybe you could convince them even to give a discount to a financial planner like me. Um, but there are, again, you should really take a look at, actually, one of my favorite ones is a company uh, or a company I'm affiliated with offers a 15% discount at Tiffany's. Tiffany's, like, when does Tiffany's have sales or offer discounts? I saw Bridget go, oh, I'm going to contact him later. Um, they actually stop. Yeah. So, but I'm just saying, like, you never know some of the discounts that may or may not be offered. So you should check it out. Sometimes the companies have some, you know, things that you might be doing anyway. There was a great question in the chat. And Bridget, you go to the next slide, but it's a difference between disability insurance and workers' compensation. And the difference is disability insurance will pay if you can't do your specific job. And workers' compensation is more of something happens to you on the job. So disability insurance, you can get sick. It can happen outside of work. It, they're looking at a different test. One, they're kind of making the employer responsible-ish. On the other hand, um, you know, then, uh, you know, di traditional disability insurance does not do that. So, um, so there is a question on in the chat about, uh, let's see, um, uh, in the nicest way possible, Alex, you're, you're super overthinking it. If your employer isn't matching, that's one thing. Um, and again, if you're at a large employer, they, they should have index funds. It should probably be less expensive in fees. The only exception I would give is if you are at a small employer that offers a 401k plan without a match. Then that is an example um, where it might make sense to not do it or do something on your own. Most um 401k retirement plans have a provision where you can take money out prior to 60 if you are considered disabled without penalties. So it's really, uh, you should still save, especially if they're offering you free money. So it can be, you know, try not to get too caught up in the details when it comes to that. But if, if it's a small company that is not offering a match, then the, uh, in let's say, you know, 40 people, that's where I found that the fees can be very high. So another thing, and uh, so just another question on self-employment retirement options, a small business uh, contributing to a Roth IRA. That's a great option. Uh, you know, so it depends on the definition of small if you have employees or not, and if you want to offer something to reward, retain the employees, I generally say, um, you know, it sounds like, again, putting money in a Roth IRA, buying some things is very, um, so no employees. There's also something called a, uh, a solo 401k, and that would just be if you wanted to put away more money than a Roth IRA would let you that would be a great option. A Roth IRA, the money grows tax-free forever. Um, so if you're especially younger or you just really hate taxes, um, then a Roth IRA makes sense. A traditional IRA, you get a tax deduction now. Uh, and then you, but you pay the taxes down the road. So that's a very large issue when you have, when, you know, money builds up and the, the, money that is going to be taxed down the road can become really significant. The theory behind that is that you're making less money in retirement so that when you're taking money out of the retirement accounts, you're in a lower tax bracket. 
Um, I find it's a good idea to have a mix of both. So generally when an employer matches, they match with pre-tax money. So I encourage especially younger employees to do after-tax money. So you're getting half your money that's growing tax-free with no deduction, half your money that's growing taxable with a deduction. Um, you know, if you're self-employed and you're looking to put away more than six, 7,000, then you can look into other options called uh, solo 401ks, for example. But uh, under that, you know, there's Occam's razor. The simplest solution is usually the correct one. Um, and a Roth IRA is easy. So Bridget did not pay me to put this slide up here, but most employers, especially the very large ones, offer significant charitable matching donations. A lot of large employers can offer up to, let's say, $5,000. So if you want to give $5,000 to neurodiversity in the workplace, uh, you can do that. So all you and you only have to give $2,500 and then your employer will mail a check for $2,500. So it, especially if you're at one of the employers that neurodiversity in the workplace might work with um, and you'd like to, you know, give back, definitely look into your employer's matching program. Um, I find not nearly enough people take advantage of what is available. Uh, and again, the meme on the left is, you know, you don't have to dump ice on your head to donate to charity. I like that one. Thought it was funny, uh, you know, but you can, um, you know, raise money for charity or even just uh, doing a lot of the things that you are probably doing anyway, if you're giving money and to some, to a charity, then why not give them double the amount of money? That's a no brainer. So, um, Andrew, we will thank you for that plug. Um, but also, we have a question in the Q and A, which I don't know if you um, saw. Oh no, can, I didn't see that. I can read it out if you want. Or did I you get it. Got it. Um, so I have a formal autism diagnosis and live in California. I started making more money and I believe I will lose Medicaid benefits. Can I qualify for it under disability? I currently don't have government income like SSI or SSDI. Oh, that's a fun answer because it depends. Um, Medi-Cal, there's a few different types of Medicaid. If you're not on SSI or SSDI, then my guess is it's probably what's considered a low-income Medicaid. So that will be just directly, you know, attached. A lot of states have Medicaid buy-in programs. If you're on SSDI and then you got Medicare, you will never lose your Medicare. They could ask you to pay for it after, I think it's 84 months. I don't know why they came up with 84 months, but that's a long time. Um, so, you know, I... Generally speaking, when it comes to buying insurance on the exchange, um, every state now has subsidies. I find, generally speaking, and there is somebody I think who is my company's health insurance expert, I think is here, so I give him permission to type in the chat with an answer. It is 30000 or less, you're probably going to get free health insurance on your state's exchange, and that's going to be reimbursed from taxes. So it, it probably, and, and that has nothing to do with disability, has nothing to do with how much money you have in your bank. It simply has to do with how much you're reporting on your taxes. And um, given those subsidies, I find, again, generally speaking, if you make less than 30,000, you're probably going to get free health insurance. Thank you, Robert. So here we go again. Um, okay. My wife says that I, sh I can't make my PowerPoints anymore. No, okay. Um, so there's a few things. So again, you have to be a public company to buy stock in a company. Um, and most large public companies offer a 15% discount on employee stock. So for example, if you have some money from your payroll, buy the stock, 
uh, at a you know quarterly or semi-annual, you get that stock at a 15% discount. Here's the cool part. Many times you could sell it the next day. So that's 15% on the stock. That doesn't mean you have to own the stock and you do want to be careful about having too much you know, in one company stock, you know, there was a company, again, Enron went bankrupt, or even like, just depending on the company, maybe the stock didn't do well. Maybe it did do well. You also work for the company. So um, there's also executive compensation and stock options. I think I could do three entire presentations on that. And, you know, RSUs and non-qualified stock options and a bunch of fancy stuff for when you're making lots of money, um, more for executives or again, an IPO or a startup. But the 15% employee stock discount is generally available to mostly everyone. Um, the stock options, et cetera, that has a bit more uh, than the scope of uh, this presentation. So... Okay, reimbursement accounts. Uh, gonna make it kind of simple. There's dependent care reimbursement accounts. So for example, uh, daycare, uh, there's healthcare reimbursement accounts. Now, sometimes employers will offer those in lieu of traditional health insurance. Uh, for example, our company does that. So we have we offer people to go and buy their insurance and then we we pay for it. Um, and it's actually, everyone gets better insurance for less money. Uh, but there's also, you can very similar to that transportation expense. So for example, if there's a daycare or something like that, you can have money get, uh, come out of your paycheck and go towards that. Okay, so <laughs> uh, this is from Jumanji, if anyone is to, to, you know, anyway. So student loans and educational assistance. I have a master's degree. So I, I worked for a large public company um, and they would pay for anything that could be used applicable somewhere in the company. I'm pretty sure I could have justified puppeteering like somewhere in the company, right? And it, so they can pay for bachelor's, master's. I have a master's uh, in finance and it was mostly paid for by my company. Now, good news is if your employer allows it until 2025, they are now able to actually directly pay student loans with that same educational assistance program that is beneficial to an employer it's obviously very beneficial to an employee. Uh, I would inquire about it. Not every employer can be as awesome and as amazing as I am as an employer and offer an educational assistance program that will pay people student loans. Um, but you can also use them to go back to school. Um, and again, the it's about 5,400 a year or so up to, it depends on the company. Uh, they don't all offer it, but, um, you know, I, I would, you know, if the student loans are high in there, you should see if your company will offer you free money for them. Okay. This is, I know I already said disability was my most important one, the disability insurance, so I can't change my mind, but this is very important as well. This is definitely the larger employers. We're talking a couple thousand employees or more. They don't offer legal services. They're usually offered by a company such as MetLife. It's called a group legal plan. Everyone needs a lawyer, especially me. I get in lots of trouble. Um, I say things I shouldn't. So I need a lawyer. But, uh, and actually that is a photo of Mandy Patinkin from the good fight, not the good wife. But thank you. That is really close. It was a great last season. He played a fake judge. Um, you should check it out. It was the good fight. It's on CBS All Access. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and I actually think the good fight spun off from the good wife. So anyway, moving on. Um, so where was I? I lost it. 
well, okay. So anyway, um, a group legal plan is probably only one to two. Jeremy, it's completely okay. It's funny. I was specifically looking for that image. So all good. You were really close though. You might've been in the good, the other show, but I never watched it. It's one to $200 a year. So if you're planning to get divorced, well, you should probably tell the person you're getting divorced from. But in all seriousness, having a a lawyer to draw wills or help with house closings, lawyers are very, very, very expensive, very expensive. Um, And one to two hundred dollars, they have a whole range of services. And think of it almost like a health insurance plan. There's certain lawyers that are in network and they will take these group legal benefits and you can generally get a lot of uh, basic for free. And you can always cancel it the following year. But if you would like, you know, will, power of attorney, a lot of, let's put, you know, a lot of even some more basic things, um, it's a great idea to consider a group legal plan if you have one available to you. Again, even down to closing on a house uh, and things like that, it can be a uh, very inexpensive way to get some legal work done if your employer offers it. Okay. So again, none of these work in a vacuum. Everyone should do what they are comfortable with and what is best for their situation. Not everyone is the same. Uh, that's pretty much the whole point of neurodiversity. So not what works for somebody should not work for everyone. There are some general things that are always a good idea. Like it's probably better to save money on a tax advantage basis than to not save money at all. But again, even then it's probably, it depends. Everyone needs a plan. That doesn't mean that uh, a plan is, is out of reach. You know, a lot of financial planners either just sell insurance or want to manage money if you have money, but there are people like me and others who are, we'll we'll call them real financial planners, who really like to look at all of the pieces, like to look at everything, like to put it together and figure out how to accomplish somebody's goals. Alex uh, asked a question, is there a way to determine if the lawyers and legal plan are AV preeminent? I don't know what that means. Um, so I apologize for that, but if you want to clarify in the chat, I can answer that. I don't know if there's any, I think there are a few other questions too. Um, so let me do one. So one is what is fully vested in a company? So a company can offer a 401k match. Are there any more slides, Bridget? Or if you could leave, then you can leave it on the one that has my contact info. If people want to write it down while I answer some of the questions. Um, from the beginning or yours. There we go. That worked. The one with both of us worked. Ah, I don't care. Okay. Um, so fully vested. Oh yeah, just leave it on the puppy. The puppy's so cute. Okay. Uh, fully vested means a company will give you a match, but you have to stay with the company for a little while in order to receive that full match. So they can reward longtime loyal employees. And yes, I need more letters after my name. So I'm working on them. I actually am. So, um, but so you have to stay with the company for a certain amount of time in order to be fully vested. You always have your money. So if you put in money with a company's plan, your money is always your money. They can't take it. But if the employer is just giving you money, um, then, uh, then you're able to... Get it, then, then there's a chance you could not be fully vested. Um, do you have if advice for folks who are unemployed and need health insurance? Yes, do you get health insurance? Um, in all seriousness, there's a great site called uh, stridehealth.com. Uh, we, all, we are also able to help somebody. Uh, Robert in the chat, with permission, can also answer a question. He is our insurance specialist and he joined because he just loves me so much during the work day that he wanted to attend an evening presentation to hear even more. Um, so, but in all seriousness, um, 
when it comes to the health insurance, you know, the exchange or the or getting a subsidy through the state is a good option. Again, you can when it comes to individual health insurance, if again, if your income is below 30,000 a year, which it almost certainly is if you're unemployed, you will get free health insurance on a state exchange. So, and the insurance is going to be the same cost, whether you buy it through an agent like Robert or us, or you call the insurance company directly, or you go to their website directly. So why not get some advice from somebody who knows what they're doing at no cost to you, unless you really feel that insurance companies really should just keep the money to themselves. I don't know anyone who's ever said that. Um, about lawyers' legal ability. Um, so I've never heard of a AV preeminent. I, I would say that you get what you pay for. So the chance of getting the best lawyer when you're only paying for one to $200 a year for all the work that they can do, I can guarantee you that you're probably not getting the best lawyer. But then again, a lot of the best doctors don't take insurance for the same reason. Um, if you want to pay five to $10,000, maybe you can get a better lawyer. Um, but, you know, it all depends on where you are, where you're located and, and, you know, who's almost like in network, kind of like doctors is the way to look at it. So I really think it all depends. You could have a great young lawyer who's starting out, who's trying to build their network. Um, so just do your homework, I guess. And if, you know, something's better than nothing, it's much better to get almost, well, almost always something, right, than to just never put anything in place. So, um, so, okay, Let's see, Robert asked the question, I just replied with the same question so people can see it. As I begin to earn more money, what is a low risk smart way to invest? It is Definitely Bitcoin, 100% Bitcoin. No, I'm actually joking. So please, um, I, I, I think it's best to start small. If you are working for an employer, I, I know the fees can sometimes be higher, like I said, but there's something to be said for just the taking the work out of it, having that automatic payroll deduction, not seeing the money, the psychology of the funds just you know, taken out of your paycheck, you don't see them, you don't miss them. So I, I think it's important to figure out what vehicle you're kind of going to invest with. See if you have any employer options. See if there's any that are any tax advantage. Generally, an employer will offer a default option. So they usually have a date after them. So like 2065, 2050. Um, so, and I did message a lawyer, Alex, and he said that system is a joke. Um, the rating system for lawyers, uh, a lawyer just got back to me. Um, and, he's, and he's my lawyer and he's fantastic. And he says he's never filed for it. So I did, look how quick we are at getting the answers for you, even when we don't know. Um, so yeah, so it helps when your best friend's a lawyer too. I, I need that in my life, right? Um, so let's see. Um, so yeah, when it comes to low risk, smart way to investing, just don't look at it, honestly, just, you know, try to make it automated, try to set it and forget it over time. Things will do well. If you leave your money in the bank, you will not make money. If you invest it in Bitcoin, you may or may not make money. Uh, it's best to just do what's boring, what, you know, uh, most people have a lot of respect or have at least heard of Warren Buffett. He's very boring. He invests in very boring things that he knows will make money over the long term. Be like Warren Buffett. It sounds really silly, but buy low, sell high exists. But if you're like, well, things are high now, well, maybe they'll be higher. And if you're putting in money every month, then if things go up, well, then you bought earlier. If things go down, then you're buying more. So that's why the, the workplace investing can be a very good thing. Of course, you can still set up a monthly, you know, 
automatically investing into an account regardless of whether you're doing it through the workplace or not. Just make sure that it actually is invested and it's not just going into cash. Um, so then Bank of America can charge you $500 million in fees, you know, just to have a checking account. So, and Bank of America is great and supportive of neurodiversity. And it's just easy to pick on one of the biggest banks. So I think Bridget has a Bank of America account or did and closed it given the reactions I see. So anyway. <laughs> I definitely do have a Bank of America account. Okay. Um, <laughs> do you have any comment on my, do you have any comment? Fantastic partner of ours. And we really appreciate <laughs> them. So um, any other questions that anyone has, feel free to put them in the Q&A or the chat. Give it a couple minutes. I'll go to the end. Um, yeah. There's Andrew's contact information. And, oh, and Ra and if you email and if you have questions about health insurance, if you email me, I can forward them to Robert or it's Robert. Um, and he's really nice. I like memes. He does lots of emojis too. Uh, he he's fantastic because health insurance is just so important. Um. I like the vision one the best. What was everyone's favorite meme put in the chat? Maybe the puppy? I, I put effort into this beforehand. So there we go. I love them. I love the, the stomps. I just Thank you. crack me up. So um, well, if there aren't any more questions, we'll we'll keep it open for another minute, but um this is contact information for both of us, our, our websites. Um, so feel free to check us both out. Um, we have, I know I see some familiar faces on the chat and in the attendees list. So it's good to, to see all of you if you've worked with us before. This is our contact in for our like social media information. Um, we're going to have more events. I know Andrew and Planning Across the Spectrum have events um, all the time um, and also a very active YouTube channel, which I'm going to check out and learn from. Um, and so I should have included it here, but um, that is Planning Across the Spectrum social media. And we have another question about the recording. Yes, we will send out the recording to anyone who, who registered, who was, who was attending. And so um, we'll try and get that out hopefully um, tomorrow or, or Monday. So yes, and if you need, um, you know, the anything else, uh, transcript or anything like that, please let us know. Um, and yeah, thank you all so much for, for attending and for your questions. Thank you, Andrew. I know I personally learned a lot um, here and wrote some notes down for myself. So much appreciated. If anyone thinks of questions afterwards, feel free to, to reach out to, to any of us. I think we can all maybe put our emails in the chat as well. Um, weird, but um, yeah. And thank you all so much. I think, um, I think, yeah, I think we're good to go unless Andrew, you have any last words. Oh, you're muted. No, well, I definitely had no last words when I was muted, but now, nope, still no last words. Still none. Still okay. none. Oh, Sage, thank you so much. We got a compliment. Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> much appreciated. Hope this was, um, Andrew amazes me with his ability to make a topic which no offense I don't find the most interesting very nobody fun. does <laughs> maybe Robert maybe Robert with insurance but other than that yeah so, <laughs> so. I hope that this was um, enjoyable and useful for all of you so enjoy the rest of your your evening or afternoon depending on on where you are and we'll stay on for another for another minute but um yeah thank you all so much and Follow us, follow Plan Across the Spectrum for more events um, and ways to, to learn more. Thank you all so much. Thank you.
I, it doesn't want me to type in the chat for some reason. I was trying to put my email in there, but didn't want me to do it. So, um, yeah. Cool. Give it another minute. And good to see some of you, Yasmin, Paul, Alex, Jerk. Good to see all of you. Some familiar faces, including some people that work at Bank of America. So, Andrew, you gotta be. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> um all right. i did they are very supportive of neurodiversity and i appreciate <laughs> that <laughs> and it's yeah um mm. all right i'm going to uh close this out we have alex used to work for a domestic bank and the bulge brackets are much better at neurodiversity support <laughs> good to know um, thanks. And Alex, I, I saw your email. I owe you an email back. So I'll come back to you soon. Um, all right. I'm going to end it now and we will be in touch with the recording and everything else. So thank you all so much. Great. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yeah.